things I focus on is helping people to get back to a place of hope. Hope. The Morning Show Worth Talking About. Faith at Work with Yvette Gavin. Welcome to Faith at Work. I'm your host, Yvette Gavin. The Faith at Work television show is all about inspiring and empowering women of faith in the workplace so they can increase their kingdom influence in the marketplace. Have you ever wondered why the most skilled, the most talented person is not always the one that gets the job? There are several factors to selecting the right candidate for a position. Now, early in my career, I was promoted to manager. It wasn't a job I asked for, and I didn't even apply for the job. It was God's favor on my life. But one of my coworkers did express interest in the job. She didn't get the promotion. I got the promotion, and she became very bitter. She said, I don't understand why they gave the position to you, Yvette, because everybody knows I know this application better than anyone here. She went on and said, it wasn't fair. Well, what I can tell you is that getting a job or a promotion isn't simply based on your knowledge of the job. See, I know I didn't know the system as well as she did, but I knew the system. I didn't need to know the system as well as she did because I became the manager. And as manager, I wasn't responsible for knowing every ins and out of the application. I was leading people. You may have heard the saying, people don't care about what you know until they know that you care. I love how in the Bible, Ruth expressed this same sentiment when she told her mother-in-law, do not urge me to leave you or to turn back from following you. For where you go, Ruth said, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. You can find that in Ruth 1, 16. Ruth knew something about building a strong relationship and showing that she cared. I learned how to build relationships with my peers, the cleaning staff, and even the senior leaders within the organization that promoted me over my coworker who had applied for the position. I showed up each and every day with the intention of connecting with others in the office and within short order, I was promoted to manager. See, building relationship is something my grandfather taught me while I was growing up in Greenville, Georgia. My grandfather, whom I affectionately called Big Daddy, said to me, make sure the president of the bank knows your name. He went on and said, without credit, he will give you a loan because you are a Stinson. My grandfather, Lawsy Stinson, had developed a relationship with the president of our local bank, and that relationship extended grace unto me. I want you to remember today that relationships matter. It's leadership handbag time. This segment is where I bring you a leadership tip or tool that you can apply to your career each week. The tip I have for you today is the book, Relationship Leadership by Tracy Yvette Washington. In this book, Tracy gives 45 keys for building engaging relationships. If you're ready to take your relationship skills to the next level, join me after this break for an inspiring conversation with Tracy Washington on relationship currency. COVID-19 has changed the way leaders engage teams, and it has caused teammates to shift how they communicate. Effective communication is more important today than ever to a team's growth and overall success. The John Maxwell Leadership Game, implemented by Yvette Gavin Consulting, can help you lead your team into more effective leadership and communication practices. Schedule your workshop today. Call us at 424-262. 2462 or email us at yvette at The perfect way to start your day. Family, traffic, meetings, traffic, family, all can be stressors in our everyday lives. 
but spending a few minutes with God can prepare you to take on the world. The Faith at Work devotional is a perfect vehicle to do just that by helping you center on what's most important, your relationship with God. And now, for your donation of any amount, you'll receive a copy of the Faith at Work devotional. Just visit our website at www.faithatwork.tv. Welcome back, everyone. My guest today is the relationship engagement expert, Tracy Yvette Washington. Welcome to the show, Tracy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's welcome so good to, me. to have you. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Well, before the break, I shared with our viewers that you are the author of Relationship Leadership and that you are the creator, not just the author, but even the creator of this whole concept of relationship and, you know, engagement for leaders. Right. So let's start there about telling us about what relationship currency is and why is it important? Well, thank you for the question. It's so important. If you think about our interdependence upon each other, the way that we do that is we have to relate to each other. Yeah. So how do we build relationships? How do we engage people? We have to relate to people in order to get promoted to, uh, to sales, you know, all of these things, these no like and trust factors, you have to build a relationship. So it's really investing in people. It's investing in one another. And you do that through what I call the relationship leadership philosophy. So I think it's about more of the currency of us interacting with each other. So why do you think so many people can fail at building those, you know, relationships and having that currency going back and forth where there's a give and take in a relationship? Well, that's a great question. I think there are several factors. Sometimes people don't trust each other because of, you know, issues or maybe some trauma in the past or just being done wrong by someone. But I think the part of building is, is understanding that people are different. We're different, we come from different backgrounds, experiences, um, we've had good times, bad times, and I think that hinders a lot of times us being able to open up to other people. And so as a, as a leader, in, for instance, in an organization, a leader has to be self-aware. Mm -hmm. That people on your team, we, I, I just say we all, we all have issues, so you work with a team of issues, just, right. just know that. And when you know that, then you can start to individualize a plan to relate and invest in other people that are not like you. I absolutely love that. And I promise you, you are the first person I've heard express it that way, that as a leader, just know going in that you are going to be having to deal with different issues, different personalities, exactly. people come from different backgrounds, exactly. and everyone is not going to think like that person. So I know that you are a consultant to leaders, mm -hmm. as well as a, speak, a speaker, teacher, and coach. So when you're working with a leader who really needs some help with understanding how to engage a little bit better with his or her team, what are some of the things that you are able to coach them on when it comes to increasing like the how piece of how they do it? Well, think about 2020. I'll use 2020 as an example. So we've got COVID, we've got all kind of division in, in our society. So my first approach to a leader is, how much do you know about the people you lead? Good. How much do you know? I mean, how much do you really know? And I'm not saying getting too much and too deeply into their personal lives, but how much do you know? And so it, while 2020 was the worst of times, it could also be the best of times for leaders to engage because now you don't know about Sue in accounting. Yeah. You didn't know that Sue was a caretaker for an elderly parent, or you didn't know that Kim had young children under the age of five. So when I go and consult with leaders, my first thing is how much do you know about your team? because you can't engage from a level of thinking that everybody is the same or that their needs are the same. And your job as a leader is to influence and impact that person's life so that they can contribute and be loyal to the cause, the organization, the mission, the goal, but you can't do that, I think, effectively until you know something about the people that you lead. Oh, I totally agree. Another key thing I just heard you say is that you can't assume that people 
want what you want and th or that they need what you exactly. need. Exactly. And it made me think of, you know, the very popular book that's been on the market for years for couples, mm -hmm. you know, my, uh, his needs, her needs. Mm -hmm. But I can see that being applicable as, it, as we work with people on our team. Right. The, there's another book by Dr. Gary Chapman mm -hmm. on the five love languages, yeah. but there's he also wrote the same book for the workplace that's based on the concept of the five love languages. It's called the the five languages of appreciation. Oh my gosh! So when you start to think about how you how do you respond if you're a person who likes accolades and I'm a leader who doesn't do that very well, I have to then get outside of my own personality to say you know what Yvette likes to have accolades, so I need to get out of my skin, so to speak, and get into her experience and know that if I say she's doing a great job, that that means something to her. Yeah. It may not mean anything to me because I might not need accolades, but I understand that you do. So I will speak your language of love or appreciation, if you will. Oh, I love that. I'm going to have to look up that book yes. as well. So I'm learning so much here today. So people may not know this about you, that, but I know from reading your bio and knowing you that you are a recovery and I, I want to make sure I say it. Um, say, t say it. It's grief recovery. Specialist. Grief recovery mm -hmm. specialist. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when you were talking about you know COVID and getting to know people, I want you to share with us some things that we need to be mindful of right now as leaders, because many people have lost loved ones. Many people um, maybe they are employed, but their spouse could have lost a job due to right. COVID. So as a leader, what are some things that we make we need to make sure that we don't say to someone who are who is dealing with loss? Well, thank you for the question. I lost my mother COVID last year, and with this tool belt, it's helped me to be able to, to really process it. But I've heard things that are incorrect, and I know that's just because people lack the knowledge of what to say. So one of the things is I know how you feel. Just because I lost my mother and you may have lost your mother, your relationship with your mother is very unique to mine. So I know how you feel. Maybe our losses are similar in nature, but not in relationship because if my relationship with my mother was toxic, then I might not feel the same way about you and you loved, you had a very loving relationship. So I know how you feel is not the best thing to say. Um, another thing is that they're in a better place. Mm. Uh, sometimes when people have had long-term illnesses such as cancer and you say things like, well, at least they're not suffering anymore, they're in a better place. Well, that might be intellectually true, but that does nothing for my broken heart. And grief is emotional, not intellectual. So many times we try to use an intellectual statement to heal an emotional wound, and that's not the right tool. So, so those are, you know, and many times in the workplace, people don't, they tiptoe around because they don't want to, it's, it's like if I ask you how you're doing, you won't tell me the emotional, and tru tr emotional truth because I might not be a safe person. But if you say, well, if I ask you, how are you doing? And you say, I'm not having a good day. If I'm not aware, self-aware, so especially as a leader, I might not know what to do with that. I'm like, I don't know what to say. So I just avoid the question. And that's why people don't talk about grief at work a lot. But if I said, I'm sorry you're feeling that way, how can I help? Is there something I can do to help? Sometimes just listening, yes. just being a good listener. That's all the person needs to do is be able to communicate their truth at that moment in the moment and be okay with expressing that without me, you know, trying to make or thinking that I'm going to feel uncomfortable because most people can't handle that. We use the word, I'm fine. I'm fine. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. No, you're not fine. When can you be free to say that? Where can you be free to say that? Yeah. So leaders need to create the psychological safety that I call it to have their, their people say their emotional truth. And many times if the relationship is not there, they don't feel the safety in doing so. Oh my gosh, those were excellent points. And I love the example you gave. I actually felt it and it was somewhat comforting just to hear it saying, I'm sorry mm -hmm. that you feel that way. Mm -hmm. I, I hear care in that, yes. you know, as you said that. Oh, that is beautiful. Yes. And some great skills, you know, to share with our viewing audience yes. too. So thank mm -hmm. you very much. Yes. So I want to get back now to your book, mm -hmm. Relationship mm -hmm. Leadership. Mm -hmm. And in it, you have 45 keys. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you can't tell us all 45 because <laughs> you guys got to go get the book to get all 45. But you can share a couple with us, right? Sure. 
Okay, awesome. So we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back from the break, will you give us like two or three keys that people can take away with them today? Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. So don't you go anywhere because when we come back from this break, Tracy Washington is going to share with you about two or three, you know, keys on how you can start working on your relationships when it comes to how you lead. And I want you guys to remember this. Leadership is not just in the workplace. You know, we lead from home as well. So we have something for you. All right. As well. See you after the break. Executive presence has nothing to do with skill and talent. Executive presence is a measure of image. The perfect way to start your day. Family, traffic, meetings, traffic, family. All can be stressors in our everyday lives, but spending a few minutes with God can prepare you to take on the world. The Faith at Work devotional is a perfect vehicle to do just that by helping you center on what's most important your relationship with God. And now, for your donation of any amount, you'll receive a copy of the Faith at Work devotional. Just visit our website at www.faithatwork.tv. Welcome back, everyone. Before the break, I asked Tracy to share with us a couple of keys from her book, Relationship Leadership. So Tracy, yes. give us those gold nuggets <laughs> or the keys, if you will. Well, the keys I break down in the book into three sections. One is communication, yes. connection, and chemistry. So if you think about relationships, they, those three categories embody how you relate to people. So in communication, under the communication section, build a bridge, not rocks. Yes, yes. So I think about a bridge as going from one side to the other. It takes you, it transports you. You get on the bridge and it transports you. So if I'm always coming over all the way to your side, mm -hmm. you're not coming to my side. You're not attempting to try to meet me. Yes. So we have to try to meet in the middle of the bridge. Ooh, I love so that. to make a qu quick example, if you have a friend or a colleague or a family member and you're always doing the calling, you're always checking on them and they're never checking on you. We have to build the bridge to them, but it's like, I'm going to stop on the middle of the bridge and I'll be here. When you call, I'll be here. But I won't always come over to your side and I won't talk about you because you're not. Yeah. I'll hang out on the bridge and then when you're ready, you come and meet me halfway on the bridge. So the, in leadership, relationships, uh, the family, friends, co-workers, where are we instead of me always coming to your office? Do you care about me? Oh, good. Can example. you call me? Yes. <laughs> Can you call me sometime? Can you email me and find out what's happening in my world? Yes. Or are we all just interested in you? So that's what the building bridges part oh, is. I like that. Yeah, that's where that yes. came from because I thought, what's a great way to talk about that? So the next section is about connection. I have to care about you. Not just say that I care, but demonstrate through my actions that I care. Not just say caring for and caring, because those could be two different things. Caring for Ooh. people could be an organization that has, you know, pizza and coffee. You can bring your pet to work. It's like we care for our employees. But how do you know Ted over there? How much do you know about Ted? Do you know that Ted might be homeless, yeah. that he's barely living paycheck to paycheck? How about you get Ted housing? Yes. That's caring for. That's caring more. Ooh, caring for, more. It's caring That's more. Good. So that goes back to how well do you know your people? Yes. And Ted might be embarrassed to say anything because of the environment is not psychologically safe. Yes. So that brings me to my third key about chemistry, about chemistry with people. We don't have to like the same things, but we do have to respect each other's differences. So part of the chemistry is how well, I think the test of a leader is how well do you get along or do you, can you lead people who you don't like? 
because I'm not the type of person that says, oh I think you like everybody, you yes. know. I don't think that that's true. I think there are people in this world that you just don't like. Exactly. You don't like them. They, it, whatever the reason is, yes. you don't like them. But how well can you care for them when you don't like them? Ooh, I like that. So, as a mark of a leader. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Because maybe if you just start to care, maybe you might learn to like them. Like them, yes. <laughs> and even more... What you've been saying, if you get take the time to get to know them, maybe you would like them. Right. right. Oh, man. Right. Find I something love to this. connect on. Find something that you can connect on. Yes. And build from there. You don't have to like the everything this person does, but find that connection point so you then can build from there. Yes. So, I, you know, I always think it's a mistake to say, oh, I like everybody. Well, that's people pleasing. That's Ooh, different. Good point. Good <laughs> that's, point. that's different yes. than leading. Because if yes. I can't lead you, if I might need to confront you or to have some type of conversation. And if I don't feel that if I, it depends on what type of leader I am, if I'm the one who is afraid to approach you, I have mm -hmm. some fear of what you might think or say, I might not tell you the truth. So we see that a lot. And then, but if I like you, I might not even confront you at all because I like you so much. And so I'm letting something go on that should be addressed. Yeah. So we've got to find that middle ground. But I think the real test is of a leader is the chemistry that they have or don't have with their team members. And it's not always about what you like. It might be what you don't like. That's, that's very good. Yeah. And you know, I was, mindful of the fact that when I was in corporate and I was leading that I didn't need to like everyone right. but I was very careful to make sure that I was respectful exactly, exactly. And, and making that effort to get to know people exactly. and I do I can say and I'm thinking about myself as a leader when I have taken the time to engage others to try to get to know them there's always some place where I'm able to connect. Right. You know, exactly. and exactly. where on the surface, maybe I didn't see that or I didn't think that that would be anything you know, would be interesting or that would connect me to that person. Yet once I started spending time with them and understanding what they value, exactly. I start finding some of those exactly. connectors. And if we think about, you know, faith, if we are believers, yes. how well of an opportunity do you have at that moment to really start to pour into someone else's life? Because you might be the only God that person knows or the yes. only thing that they see close to the love of Christ. And so if we're not careful, we can miss the moments because the Bible says some have entertained angels unaware. Yes. How do we know that this person wasn't sent or an assignment for a specific period of time for us to impact their lives? And yeah. so if we are, you know, we're busy not liking them, I'm pretty sure Jesus don't like everything we do. I'm pretty exactly. Sure. I'm quite sure of that. I think I could be 100% yes. certain that we are not always doing what he likes, yeah. but yet he still cares for us and yet he still loves us. And so how can we demonstrate that, especially leaders of faith in the marketplace? Exactly. How can we do that even with people that we don't like? So I think everything can kind of be, um, it, it's almost like a test, yeah. so to speak, to test and raise your leadership, uh, not just for what we're trying to achieve as a goal, but also that person to help them come up and yeah. at the same time. Yes, that nurturing and mentoring them to grow even yes. spiritually. Right, and we grow so, in the process. It, exactly. Our leadership skills, should we sharpen them? Yes, oh, I love this. So, you know, we're always talking about faith at work and how to help people grow their faith mm -hmm. in the marketplace. And mm -hmm. I know that's something that's dear to both of our mm -hmm. hearts yes. and nurturing and helping others get to that. So what does faith at work means to you? Faith at work. I think faith at work means to me helping other people see the potential in themselves, that the God in you. So yes. calling out the God in you. And, and I think that takes me knowing the God in me because yeah. faith without works, we all know what the impact of that is. So if I have faith and Psalms 37, four is one of my favorite scriptures, Ooh, one of my favorite. One of mine too. <laughs> yeah. Delight yourself in him and he will give you the desires of your heart. So if I'm delighted in him as, as my faith, as a demonstration of my faith, when I see you, I can only see what you are the God in you and what you're capable of. Yeah. What I have to work out are my issues my idiosyncrasies, yes. all the things that like, I don't like, like, why does it bother me when they leave a, a half empty cup on the counter in the, in the break room? Why does that bother me? Well, maybe you were made to do something in your past that you didn't like and you were yelled at yes. for it, you know? Some, so we gotta work out some things and I think God brings relationships around as mirrors Ooh. to reflect 
what's in us That's good. rather than to just like, oh, these people are just part of my life. I think the yeah. people are mirrors that reflect back to us who we are, but what we are, we don't always like the feeling of it. And so that's why we have to be self-aware to say and ask ourselves the tough questions. Why do I respond that way? Yeah. What's going on up underneath the surface? So to me, the works part of that is the faith that works is if faith and works is me believing that the desires of his heart are already in me, Ooh. but he needs to bring a mirror around to show me me. Yeah. He needs to bring mirrors. So as a leader, I've got a bunch of mirrors pointing back and be like, oh, oh, Okay. <laughs> yes. Oh. I, I love this, Tracy, because I'm thinking now, oh, I'm going to go back and do some more self-reflection myself. It's an ongoing process. Uh, yes. We all have to do it on that, an ongoing basis. I stuff. use an analogy when I'm doing training for leaders uh, of the olive tree. In the Mediterranean culture, the olive tree represents wealth. Well, what makes, the, makes it wealthy is the oil that's in it. And the only way to get the oil from the olive is to crush it. Mm. Yeah. So there are people who are meant to be in your life that are, quote unquote, olive crushers. So they bring out the best in you, the olive oil in you, okay. the oil in you, because they are difficult to deal with. You can't get rid of them. You yeah. can't have the cancel culture be applicable in many cases. You can't you know, cancel out everybody. But it makes you stand up and learn how to relate to people that don't like you or that you don't like. It helps you to learn compassion, to love the unlovable, which are all the characteristics of the spirit that dwells in us. Yeah. So we get tested on that all the time oh until it's gosh. perfected. So that is what faith, <laughs> faith and works mean. Yeah. So if you kind of dead in the works part, you don't get to really love the level of faith that you could have. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. So elegantly spoken. I love this. I cannot believe we're running out of time. So before we go, and you're going to definitely have to come back to this show. Absolutely. We're going to continue love this to. conversation. But before we leave, I know that you have prepared a special gift for our guests. Absolutely. So will you just share that with them and also let them know how they can get in touch with you? Absolutely. Well, I believe that every person is a leader. They are leading their families, they're leading organizations, they're leading teams, and you're leading somewhere. You yourself are a leader, leading yourself somewhere. You have dreams and goals and aspirations. So I have made available a ebook of this book in Yvette's hand, Relationship Leadership, completely free. All you have to do is go to bit.ly slash relationship leadership ebook and download your copy right from there. You don't need to opt in, you don't need to do anything, you can just download the book for free right there. And if you'd like to get a hold of me, I'm on all social media at Tracy, T-R-A-C-Y, no E, Washington on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Instagram. And you can also visit my website, www.getrelationshipcurrency.com. Awesome. Amazing. Well, thank you so much thank for you. the special gift for our audience. Absolutely. I really appreciate that. You're welcome. Well, guys, I am Yvette Gavin here today with Tracy Washington reminding you that faith, faith without, without works, works is dead. dead.